Hey everybody, John here. Now, Facebook just made a really important refresh to the Facebook Web Insights. So the purpose of this video is that I'll be covering the most important things uh, regarding what's new, what's awesome, and what sucks. Now, I did go into more detail regarding all the changes associated with the new Web Insights. Make sure you check out my blog post on that. A link to that is within the show notes. All right, so first of all, what's new? The most obvious, just a vastly improved interface. The old one was okay, nothing wrong with it, but this, it's faster, it's cleaner, it's simpler, it's easier to manage, there's a, a different color scheme going on, it's softer, it's just nicer in general. It's really hard to explain without you kind of going through it yourself. There's also something I'm calling rate comparisons. I don't know what else you'd call it, but it's within the people tab uh, under either your friends, people reached, people engaged, does not matter. I'll go into people reached. And within any of these, you hover over one and they'll say, for example, women 25 to 34 are 13.7% of the people I have reached. And that same demographic is 12.8% of my fans. So that makes for a, a ratio of 1.1. So in other words, I've reached 1.1 times more women within this demographic than the number um, I'd expect to reach. So that's an interesting change. Another one has to do with the new filtering. So within posts, viewing all posts, I look at reach and then just say, hey, I want to split out reach between organic and paid. Do that. So that's kind of cool, right? So you, you hover over them and you'll, you'll see how much of it was organic or how much it was paid. Same with fans and non-fans reached. Very cool. And uh, this by default uh, for engagement is post clicks, likes, comments, and shares. But you can also view likes, comments, and shares only without the post clicks. All the negative feedback and then engagement rate. So pretty cool stuff. Another change that may be kind of minor, but I really appreciate it, is this drag and select, I don't know what you call it, this date range select. Just click, drag it around, and look at all those graphs and charts and stuff moving at the same time. That's pretty darn cool, Facebook. Good work. Now, another change falls under posts called best post types. This is one of those changes that I'm sure a lot of marketers will put under what's awesome. I think it's all right. Uh, the problem is I, I feel like it provides a lot of really misleading information. And also, for those who understand Facebook, some pretty obvious information. So they say best post types uh, based on reach and engagement. But I don't know, man. I mean, when you talk about post clicks, for example, yeah, obviously photos will get more post clicks because it has a built-in advantage of being able to just click on a photo, something you can't do with the others. So, um, and they only break it out according to reach, post clicks, likes, comments, and shares. You can't see, you know, which gets the most shares, which gets the most comments, which gets the most likes. You can't even uh, break it down into specific types of post clicks. Say like a link click, man, I'd care about that. So, you know, something like a link looks pretty poor when you look at it this way. But if your goal, like mine is, is to get link clicks, I'm pretty sure this is going to do pretty darn well compared to everything else. So I think it's a really cool start, but um, I don't think it's awesome. But what is awesome? This feature. When your fans are online. So Facebook will give you a one-week period, times of day, that your fans have been reached by your content by hour. Now for mine, it's pretty even for the most part. I mean, drops down to 2,606, rises to 4,562, and this is all my time zone, not uh, the time zone of my fans. So there is some difference there. It, it's kind of tough though, because obviously some of that has to do with when I'm posting, Though I will say I do post uh, after midnight as well. So, so these, it's not just because I haven't posted any content lately. So really interesting stuff. Um, I think it's a good first step. What I'd love to see here is real-time data and also 
the times of day when my fans are engaging with that content, not just reaching, getting, being reached by it. And oh yeah, day of the week, we want to see that as well. Something else I really liked was the benchmark data. And this is all within the page tab. All right, so page likes, post reach, page visits. It's all within there. And on the right hand side, you'll see benchmark. Compare your average performance over time. So I can pull this out, likes, comments, or shares. Likes, how are my likes? So average during the current period, 41 likes per post. It used to be 44. Uh, that's probably due to being just coming off of a holiday week, but still pretty interesting. You can unclick it and click comments. Yep, comments down as well. How about shares? Shares down as well. So really interesting stuff right there. One of my favorite additions is one that is very, very small that won't, most won't even notice. It's post clicks. This is the total number of clicks on your posts, not including likes, comments, or shares, which are broken out above within engagement. So as you should know by now, engagement does not include only likes, comments, and shares, but also all other clicks as well. Most often confuse that. But what I like is that within the web version of Insights, Facebook now provides a separate item, getting taking out all those likes, comments, and shares and saying, okay, how about all those other clicks as well? Very cool, very happy that Facebook did that. All right, so what sucks about the new Web Insights, there are really two main things that are pretty well connected. The first is that the exports were not touched in this refresh. Now the exports, that's where all the real data is held, okay? Uh, the problem is it's incredibly difficult to digest and sift through, very, very difficult. And uh, nothing's changed there still hard to manage okay now the second second thing second reason this sucks is really why the export is valuable in the first place and why you have to continue to use it it's because it holds all the important data and this web insights is still pretty top level now they have started including the the post clicks which is nice but uh there's so many other pieces of information that are lacking here that i want to dig into that I can't, so I have to keep going to the exports. All right, so that's my tour of what's new, what's awesome, and what sucks regarding the new web insights. For more on this, make sure you check my blog post. It's in the show notes. Thanks.